Hello guys and welcome to TG and the Game Nerd The Shore. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. Last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and found the final numbered doors. Doors 1, 2, and 6. These doors are the final ones that we have to get through before we finally reach the number 9 door and we're able to escape. So, pretty important choice here. We have three options, door one, door two, and door six. So the door that I'm going to be choosing is door number one. My reasoning for this is because if we go ahead and look at the log, I want to go back and... Okay, so what makes this really easy is that if we look at people who have already requested door one, we have Ace and Clover which is equal to, uh, if you add their numbers together, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus our 5 equals 10, and 1 plus 0 equals 1, which makes uh, doing the... This makes deciding to go through this door really easy. Uh, looking back at this, uh, for door 2 we have 7 in Lotus, which 7 plus 8 is 15, plus uh, 7 plus 8 is 15, uh, 1 plus 5 is 6, so plus 3 and 6 is 9, meaning that those four people can go through the number 6 door. Which means that everything is pretty even when it comes to choosing this option. Plus the characters that we're going to see, uh, Ace and Clover. Clover I want to hang out with because she's been dealing a lot. She's been dealing with a lot with, you know, the death of Snake and, you know, just being sad all around and plus uh june pl uh plus we were accidentally kind of uh mean to her a little bit early in the previous episode so this will give us a chance to hang out with her and maybe make up for that and plus ace is just cool he's pretty awesome in this game so i'm gonna go ahead and just choose door one my choice is door one santa was unconvinced hey wait a minute there you cheating Cheating? I'm asking if you changed your number after you heard what doors we wanted. How could I do that? I wrote it down on the paper earlier. Let me see that. Junpei shrugged and handed it to him. Santa examined it furiously. The others peered at it as well. As they did, Junpei quickly slipped the piece of paper he'd been hiding into his pocket. Although he'd never know it now, Santa had been justified in his suspicions. Junpei had switched the papers. He prepared three pieces of paper for doors 1, 2, and 6, and put the paper with door 6 into the pot. He put a small mark on it so that he would know which one was his. He put the paper that said door 1 in his left hand, and the paper that read door 2 in his right. When the drawing began, he saw to it that he drew last. The rest was easy. If he wanted to go into door 1, he'd use his left hand, and his right hand if he wanted door 2. Of course, if he wanted door 6, that would be simple. All he needed to do was switch nothing and say 6 had been what he wanted all along. Well, what does it say? He fought the urge to smirk. <laughs> you got lucky. Santa snorted and tossed the paper aside, frustrated. Very well. We've decided who will go through door 1. It will be Clover, Junpei, and myself. 1 plus, po one plus 4 is 5 equals 10. 1 plus 0 equals 1. Our only problem is the two remaining teams. June and I want door 6. Lotus and I want door 2. That's not good. We can't open either of the doors with only two people. Fine. 7 will go through door 6. 3 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 equals 24. 2 plus 4 equals 6. Sure thing. I didn't really want to go through door 2 anyway. Besides, if we got a younger girl with us, it'll lower the average age. Right, June? Eh. Okay, uh, I was thinking about this last episode, too. I'll have to double check this. Isn't Seven older than Lotus? Because I'm pretty sure Seven is 45 and Lotus is 40. So what the hell, man? Eh. Well, I, um... June was at a loss for words. Lotus was not. <laughs> that pig. You just wait and see. 
Her eyes were the eyes of a woman prepared to kill. A shiver ran down Junpei's spine. Even after they separated the staircase, Lotus was, Lotus was still muttering angrily to herself. Circumstances dictated that Junpei and Jun would have to part ways again, but this time it didn't sting quite so much. After all, he knew he would see her again. Till we find that nine door, Zero ain't gonna split us up. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we can't open door nine. That's how the nonary game works. Junpei, Ace, and Clover headed toward a deck. They took out the Earth Key and opened the door to the left. It opened, and they walked through. It was just as Santa and Lotus had said. At the end of the hallway sat a door with a large red one upon it. A numbered door. To the left of it, bolted to the wall, was the red. Ace went first and waved his wrist over the scanner panel. Junpei was next. Finally, listlessly, Clover lifted her arm. She leaned toward the scanner panel. The third asterisk clicked to life, shining brightly. Ace took hold of the lever. He took a deep breath and turned to Junpei and Clover. Are you ready? Shall I pull it? Yeah, any time. Clover said nothing. She nodded, a little more than a lethargic twitch of the head. Very well then, let's go. Three, two, one. The door opened. They stumbled into the room. Frantically, Junpei scanned the room. His eyes stopped at the device that would determine whether they lived or died. There it is! Over there! Next to the door they'd come through was the dead. As one, they ran to it. They put their hands over it as if they were fighting for it. It stopped. Yes, it did. Jim Pickett feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Ace and Clover were breathing hard and fast. It was the third time they'd been through the process, but they had yet to grow accustomed to it. Not that Junpei wanted to. He planned to finish the game before he got a chance to let imminent death become commonplace. Junpei looked around again, this time more slowly. There was another door, different from the one they'd entered through. He took hold of the knob and easily, gently pulled it open. So, this is the wheelhouse? He closed the door again and turned to Ace and Clover. He fixed each in turn with a meaningful stare, then spoke. Ace, you investigate the wheelhouse next door. Very well. Clover, you're in charge of this room. Say something. Uh, okay. I will. All right then, let's get started. All right, the wheelhouse. This is a pretty good one. Uh, first thing we want to do is open up these drawers right here. First thing we see and we get a map. Not a map of the ship, mind you, but a stack of nautical charts. I think this is a nautical chart? There's this line on it here. I think the line is the route the ship is supposed to take. There are these dots all over the map. Oh, uh, those are probably ports, like for a boat to stop at. Looks like the lines connect to the dots. There's a stack of charts... There's a stack of charts like that one. Yeah. How many are there? I'm not really sure, but I'd say somewhere in the ballpark of 10 or so. Stack of nautical charts. Each page has different lines on it. Next, we want to exit out of there, move back, and to the left right here. Right here, uh, you'll see a map on the wall that has uh, various different dots across it. We take a look at it, a world map with the Atlantic Ocean in the center. There are a number of red pins in, the, in several locations. What do these red pins mean? 
Well, the nautical charts I picked up earlier have a map like this one. Maybe one of them matches up to the pins or something. Let's see. Well, what do you know? Looks like this one's a match to the pins. Okay, so we've got seven locations connected by straight lines. Each one has a word next to it. It's probably the speed. New material's been added to the file screen. I haven't looked at this in a while, but let's go ahead and check it out. The nautical table. So we have directions. It goes south, uh, west, southwest, northwest, east, and then north. And we have the speeds full, half, slow, full, half, dead, stop. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind for later and back out of here. We also have a desk right in front of us. And if we open up this mint, oh, pretty empty desk. My brother's desk look a lot like this. Oh, because he couldn't see. He never put stuff on it that he didn't need. Damn, that's... What am I supposed to say to that? Poor kid. I wonder how much dialogue there is like it. Where, like, you examine different stuff and Clover keeps bringing up Snake. Like, oh, these are some pretty cool books. My brother had books once. We open up the middle drawer. We get a pocket watch. That's a pocket watch. She sure hasn't been saying much. She just keeps looking at the floor. She seems kind of sad. Oh yeah, her brother died. A pocket watch. An old one, too. The kind you have to wind. The hands have stopped at 5 minutes, 39 seconds, past 10 o'clock. Hmm, wonder if it's broken. Yeah, I don't feel anything moving when I fiddle with the dial here. Looks like I can move the hands manually, though. Broken pocket watch. I can only move the hands manually. The knob doesn't work. A voice he hadn't expected startled Junpei from his examination of the pocket watch. Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? He spun around to find Ace standing in the doorway. Junpei shrugged and handed him the pocket watch. Hey, man, what are you doing over in this room? Oh, I just thought I'd come check up on the two of you. Is there a problem? Uh, well, not a problem, but... Junpei looked desperately around the room, anywhere but Ace, trying to find a convincing reason to dismiss him. Ace opened his mouth, then took another look at Junpei and shut it again. A small smirk appeared on his face. Oh, I see. Of course. He looked Junpei over, and glanced at Clover. I apologize for the intrusion. Well, best of luck. Ace gave Junpei a knowing pat on the shoulder and left. For no reason he could fathom, Junpei's head began to hurt. A sharp, piercing pain. Sharp pain in his head. How much time passed? He wasn't sure, but he did notice when he strode through the door. His smile was more of a smirk, and he had the air of a man who knew more than his opponent. Uh, yes. There's something I wanted to check, if you don't mind. Yeah, what's that? Pardon me. With no warning, he slipped his hand into the pocket of Junpei's vest. H hey what the hell are you doing? He reached for Ace's arm. But it was already too late. In the older man's hand were the pieces of paper Junpei had balled up and hidden in his pocket. Just as I thought. You switched them, didn't you? When we voted. Oh, well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. When? Why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. A smiled, gave Junpei a friendly pat on the shoulder, then turned on his heel and left. It was a small defeat, but it was a defeat. Junpei had lost the upper hand, and he knew it. He could feel his stomach begin to tense. Oof. Well, that's not good. I'm not really sure what that, uh... Oh, by the way, there's the door that we used to enter. Not really sure what that, uh, pain in Junpei's head, uh, was right there. Uh, if any of you guys know what that was, let me know in the comments. Uh, make sure that if it has something to do with spoilers, to put a spoiler warning for it. Uh, let's move left over here. We have this right here. An engine order telegraph. They use this on old ships to adjust the speed of the ship. Like the gear shift in a car. Well, it's a little different. The device doesn't connect directly to the engine. In short, it's a transmitter. 
The navigation officer uses it to set the speed of the ship and sends a signal to the engine. There's a handle on top of it which can be moved back and forth to... Hold on. Huh? There's no handle. You're right, there isn't. It looks as though it was de deliberately removed. Hmm. So we'll need to find a handle somewhere. There's also the most uh, interesting, interesting thing in the room right here. We have a wheel. A steering wheel. Let's see if it... Whoa! Looks like the steering wheel moves. So it would seem. I noticed something else as well. What's that? Well, when you move this wheel, the compass also moves. What do you mean? The ship. It's moving. Huh! <laughs> Tricked you, didn't I? The wheel and the compass must be connected to one another somehow. Hmm, do you think that's important? Well, let's try turning it again. Alrighty, so now we need to, uh, we have another minigame here. So for this minigame, you'll remember earlier how with the nautical charts we had directions that the ship was going in. We had, like, uh, southwest, southwest, various stuff like that. So what we want to go ahead and do is move the ship in a way that, uh, you know, goes in all of those different directions. So first we go south. West. Southwest. Northwest. East. And North. There we go. What the? The handle came off. <laughs> Stooping so low, are you, Zero? We got a handle. The handle that came off the steering wheel. Hmm. The handle. The handle that came off the steering wheel. If I put this in here, then maybe... Junpei, you're stronger than you look. You pulled that handle off the wheel with your bare hands. No, I didn't. It just fell off. The handle that came off the steering wheel. Maybe I could use it to move something else. Handle that came off the steering wheel. If we could use it to move somebody else, okay. Uh, some things in this room have a lot of, like, extra dialogue for examining stuff. Uh, like the different items that you get. But yeah, we were looking for a, a uh, handle here, so let's go ahead and put that in. So, I sure hope this handle fits. Yes, it fits! Excellent. That should allow us to operate the engine order telegraph. Let's give it a shot. So similar to what we did with the steering wheel, we need to do something uh, similar for the telegraph. So on the nautical charts, we had full, half, slow, full, half, dead, and stop. Hey, there we go. Huh? That's weird. I thought I put it in the right speed. Did I mess up? No, I don't think so. Look, something's happening to the back wall of the wheelhouse. Yeah, you're right. Let's check it out. Uh, also, be sure to pull out the pocket watch. Did I search this properly? A mechanical pocket watch with a spring. It doesn't appear to be working. The hands have stopped at 5 minutes 39 seconds past 10 o'clock. Turning the knob does nothing. Yeah, it's probably broken. It looks as though you could move the hands, however. Broken pocket watch. I can only move the hands manually. The knob doesn't work. Alright, so we move our way back here. Uh, look all the way to the right, and you'll see this, uh, sort of... This is one of those things that, like, when it comes to, like, flights and stuff like... I'm pretty sure this is one of those things that, when it comes to, like, flights and stuff like that, it tells you, like, departure time and stuff like that. Digital scoreboard or something like that. On the left side, it's got the names of the ports the ship will stop at along its route. The last line says 10 seconds past 3 o'clock. That must be the estimated time of arrival at the final port. Hmm. Oh, perhaps... Whoa, what's he doing? Excuse me, Junpei. Hey, he just took my pocket watch. Hey, what the hell are you doing? You just trust me. It should be fine now. Well, thanks for giving me the pocket watch back, but you don't need to look so smug about it. 
Let's see what he... Oh, he moved the hands. Ten seconds past three o'clock. Oh, so you changed it to match the final arrival time. Uh, Ace nodded slowly. You know what to do next, right? Give it a shot. So now with the correct pocket watch time, we're going to go ahead and put it into the slot here. Looks like this is some sort of lock. I think there's some extra dialogue for examining the stopwatch a bit, but I think it's just like Ace getting impatient that you're not putting the stopwatch in the right place. And I think you might need to look at the scoreboard again to see uh, what the next time is you need to use or something like that. I forget exactly what it was, uh, but I'll just go ahead and put this in here. It's got a weird shaped in indentation on it. Actually, it's shaped just like this pocket watch I've got. Let's try putting this in there. There we go! Yes! It says open now! Good work. It seems you were successful. Well done, Junpei. Hey, Clover. What? Look, we unlocked the door. Now we can get out of this room. Oh. Well, let's go then. Clover. And that will be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!